Now let's look at the very first uh, end condition which in which we look at the buckling load for a column with both the ends pinned or hinged. So this is the column which is shown to you. At both the ends you have a hinge joint. Okay. And you have these compressive loads being acted upon uh, this column. So let's assume at a distance x from the top end a section xx at which the deflection of the column is y okay so before we uh, go into this if your column is bending so this is the mean position if your column bends like this this is taken to be a negative bending if your column bends like this then this is taken to be a positive bending so make a note of that sign convention so this is clearly a negative bending so let's find out the bending moment at the section xx so you will have minus p into y that's the bending moment now as per the uh, videos that we have done on deflection this is what you get that is ei into y double dash is equal to minus p y all right so let's uh, start uh, integrating that or, or let, let's start solving the differential equation we don't have to integrate it you get y double dash is equal to minus p upon ei into y so what will i do i will uh, assume a constant alpha square which is p upon ei and i will substitute it here so you, your differential equation will become y double dash plus alpha square y is equal to zero okay so now the question remains only to solve for y because this is what we need to find out and from there we will be able to find out that at what load will you have buckling okay so let's solve it so this is a pretty uh, straightforward differential equation solution so it will be y is equal to a sine alpha x plus b cos alpha x you just need to write down the complementary function the particular integral will be zero okay so this is the reflection of the column as compared you know as a function of the distance x okay now let's write down the end conditions so it says at x is equal to zero we can see that the deflection is zero at this point there is no deflection all right so i can say that zero is equal to a into sine zero plus b into sine cos this is not sine but this is cos let's get rid of this so this will be into cos 0 okay now sin 0 is 0 so this entire term will be gone cos 0 is 1 so it will stay so the value of 0 now becomes uh, the value of b now becomes 0 so you will have b is equal to 0 let's put it in this equation and you will get the result as a into sin alpha x okay now the next boundary condition is that at x is equal to l as well the value of deflection is zero so if you go from this point to this point again your deflection is zero so again i'll put uh, this boundary condition in this equation so you will get zero is equal to a into sine alpha l now i cannot assume a to be zero because if a becomes zero and your b becomes zero then the entire uh, solution has no meaning left so i will have to say that in this case sin alpha l is zero okay so sin alpha l can be equated to zero now when is sin theta zero sin theta is zero at zero degree or pi radian so i'll take the next uh, logical thing that is pi so i can say alpha l is equal to pi so when sin pi is there you get a value zero okay so let's square it because i have a value for alpha square and i need to for, to find the value for p dot the under root of p so i'll square it which will give me l alpha square l square is equal to pi square from here i'll put the value for p p upon ei into l square is equal to pi square from this expression i can find out the value for p so p will be equal to 
pi square e i upon l square so that is the load at which your or if you exceed this load your your column is bound to buckle so you need to keep your design load or the working load for this column below this load that is your buckling load so i hope you understood this mathematical analysis on the end condition where both the ends are having a hinge joint now after this let's move on to the next end condition